Hi guys, welcome back to my channel once again here on YouTube. Today is Season 2, Episode 1 of Obscure Wrestling DVDs. And I'm sorry I left the last se uh, season on a shit note, I guess. Um, I didn't know whether to continue the series on or whatever. And I didn't know what I was going to do if I was going to review something else for that one uh, next. So I completely, temporarily abandoned it. And then... Um, I decided uh, why not resurrect it and um, try again and I grabbed this off my shelf best of death matches and I put it in my DVD player and I gave it a watch and it's now here for a review for you guys today see I put myself through all this torture of watching these unusual looking wrestling dvds so you don't have to waste your money on them unless you want to of course but um as we've seen in episode one season one of obscure wrestling dvds there are some terrible wrestling dvds out there as hard as the rock i think it was called that has to be without doubt one of the worst if not the worst dvd wrestling related dvd i own in my collection terrible but anyway this really intrigued me because the cover artwork looked very cool and i know it's from um wrestling network they seem to get a lot of shit uh feedback um about their the content they put out dvd wise uh by a lot of collectors i've picked up on over the last few years of me collecting um and to be fair, uh, High Spots as well, sorry, High Spots Wrestling Network um, put this out. And to be fair, this this uh, presentation uh, really does sell the DVD, you know what I mean? Because when I when I saw it for sale, I thought, oh, you know, you know I'm going to I'm going to purchase that one. I'm really drawn to that. I want to give it a watch just to see what it's all about. So let's have a look then, guys. So yeah, very cool artwork for the front cover. It looks like a horror movie maybe with all like the uh what looks like blood dripping down from the top of the logo well the uh the banner sorry at the top and then the red uh the red writing with the skull and crossbones there's the disc and here's the back now this contains six matches and had a run time of approximately one hour, 46 minutes. Um, most of the matches, I should say, I don't recognize any of the wrestlers from, but I do recognize a few of the wrestlers, um, which I'll go over as we get to each of the match, as we go over each of the match, should I say, sorry. So we kicked things off with a wrestler called Dan Barry against another wrestler called Bill Carr. This was from uh, Joey Ryan's Penis Party event, which I believe was held over the WrestleMania weekend of 2020 or 2021. Can't remember the year now. But um, yeah, this was, I've seen this before. I didn't realize until I played this back because like I said, I didn't uh, recognize any of the wrestlers' names. But uh, playing this and then um, as the match progressed, you could see the the billboards up for the uh, the event name, so penis party, Joey Ryan, uh, Joey Ryan's penis party, and um, yeah, uh, it's it's okay the match. I mean, <laughs> if you're into inflatable penises covered in thumbtacks attacking your opponent as a weapon or whatever, then um, you know, by all means, this could be for you, this kind of match. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that was used for a bit of comic relief for the uh, match. But it was a hardcore rules kind of match, I guess. And we had um, a good spot with um, a door which had loads of uh, mouse traps placed all over it. And one of the wrestlers, I do believe it was Dan Barry, according to my notes here, got put through the mouse traps uh, as part of the finish i mean that's probably the only highlight of that match um it didn't i wouldn't call it an, a death match as such um 
So I did like go into this DVD without really high expectations, to be honest, because you know what I mean? You just don't when you don't know what you're going to expect, I guess, half the time. And, and with this match in particular, it, yeah, I, I wasn't overly impressed. And as I said, I've seen it before. Um, uh, once I uh, pressed the play button and this match took place, I was like, ah, yeah, yeah, I remember this one now. But um, yeah, I give it a two and a half out of five stars that match. So not disappointed, but um, not exactly a death match, I wouldn't say. Um, moving on, as, uh, as my expectations were pretty low after that one, um, surprisingly, this CZW Cage of Death 10, I do believe that is, a match between Ricky Shane Page and Mance Warner. Wow, just fucking wow, guys. I wasn't expecting uh, this match to be as, not only as brutal as it was, but absolutely fucking awesome. It was so violent. And I really was blown away. I wasn't expecting it to be as graphically violent as it was. Within the first 30 seconds of the opening bell, we had um, each wrestler putting um the opposition through sheets of glass which were already st uh standing up in each respective uh corner of the uh ring which was um surrounded by a cage should i say as well and um it was like you know uh AEW revolution 2024 darby allen uh, glass spot just imagine that in your head this is what both of their backs and arms looked like within the first 30 seconds of this match uh, opening up. And fucking hell, wow. <laughs> and it didn't stop there. It, was, it wasn't going to go downhill from there. It was just one thing after another. We had lots of blood flow and plenty of spots using glass sheets. They seemed to love that. For some particular reason and uh, <laughs> one spot that stood out for me which was impressive but also fucking disgusting the dude called uh ricky shane page stapled mance warner's tongue to a ply board which was covered in barbed wire <laughs> on the lead on the floor this is uh a few seconds later, Mance Warner proceeded to try and lift himself up from the wrestling uh, ring floor. And while doing so, his tongue was lifting the... Uh, somehow the strength of his tongue was <laughs> stayed pulled to the fucking ply board bar uh, mixed with barbed wire. Pulling it up and uh, it was just horrific... And you see, just see the blood pissing out, and and then plus the blood adding from his um, from his forehead as well, where he'd um, been pulverized with countless other fucking weapons in the match as well. And this guy, it just looked like a horror fucking movie. It was nasty, absolutely nasty. And um, the finish came when Mance Warner put Ricky Shane Page through through the top of the cage but the, the cage design itself guys it was it was strange it's like a yellow yellow cage but it didn't have a roof as such instead it had lots of boards all balanced on top of each other and um like wooden boards and yeah it was just a, a very strange structure they, they got on top of that and underneath uh the board back in the ring we had chairs stacked up on, uh, I believe it was a pl that ply board with the barbed wire that the other dude got his fucking tongue stapled to. Uh, countless other things as well. Another glass sheet, I do believe, as well. And uh, yeah, this uh, Warner dude put the page dude through the board that they were balancing on. And that all collapsed. He... He then went through the, all the other structures that they built inside the ring beneath the uh, board on top of the cage. I'm sorry, I'm trying to explain as best I can. And um, 
he didn't make, need to make the pinfall and this Mance Warner dude became the new CZW champion. CZW Combat Zone Wrestling, guys. I am aware of that promotion and I have seen some of their matches before, but nothing to uh, this extreme. This was truly barbaric, honestly. I, I can't really describe it um, as much as that. You've got to, It's got to be seen to be believed. And, um, yeah, I thought, like, Nick Gage's matches were pretty fucking nasty, but this one was just over the top. And it's probably one of the worst, um, not worst match, uh, one of the most brutal matches I've seen in a very long time, wrestling-related, that is. And, um, yeah, as I was saying, Warner managed to pick up the victory by putting him uh, his opponent, Paige, through that uh, the ceiling. I call it a ceiling, the board, uh, through to the, all the uh, structure they built in the ring below and that somehow gave him the victory without making a pinfall attempt i guess that was a way of winning the match I, i'm not sure i don't know the rules of it but i was just watching it along anyway and very in, uh, much enjoyed that one guys um i give that one a five out of five stars i wasn't expecting to give any matches five stars on this compilation today but wow fuck that was that was something um next up Five dollar death match. Now I was thinking to myself before um going into this when I was reading the match listing, five dollar death match sounds to me like a death match put together on a five dollar budget. And um it was kind of that way, but the, the five dollar means um the name of the promotion, which I wasn't aware of until you know watching this and then looking into it a bit more afterwards with a bit of extensive research of the name, and yeah. Uh, also known as uh, FDW or 5DW or something. Yeah, $5 wrestling, a death match between four wrestlers who I don't want to be cruel when I say this, guys, but just look like your typical everyday. <laughs> I don't know, like your, your father was wrestling. It just looked like the average guy off the street. Do you know what I mean? Like they gathered together four random men put them together in a match, uh, you know, and just see how it all plays out. None of them looked trained at all. They they were all sloppy. It was just a complete clusterfuck, to be fair. And the match rules were um, something stupid like a pinata Lego death match. I don't know. They, you had to use a... Um, you had to break the pinata open, which had Lego inside, spread the Lego out, and you could just use that as, like... Um, as a form of thumbtacks, I guess. And yeah, if you can imagine the movie Fight Club where just random guys, your everyday average guys just attacking each other, you know, just, just to get out of their system. It kind of felt something like that. I don't want to be so cruel and degrading, but there was this one guy in particular that seemed to get picked on the most, this really skinny guy. I don't know his name. I tried to listen to the um, commentators try and go over the names, but... I couldn't get his name. I didn't catch his name, but he, he was targeted the most. I mean, he had, um, he'd been put through um, the Lego by this guy that they called White New Jack. And he's basically dressed like New Jack, the wrestler New Jack. And um, obviously, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, this guy was a bit of a fucking lunatic. He got some tape as well and taped Lego to his head. So he was headbutting the skinny dude and the skinny dude got put uh, like an FU style by uh, the, the white new Jack, I'll call him. I don't know why I'm calling him that. That's what the commentators called him uh, through the Lego. And and then there was this, um, the finish to the match was just bizarre as well. There's like all these plastic forks on this like model they they'd made and Oh, it's just very strange. The, the skinny guy got suplex, uh, suplex from the top turnbuckle onto the plastic forks by the white New Jack guy, and the white New Jack guy picked up the victory. Um, this was a fatal four-way match. I, I'm not sure if I said that, guy, uh, guys, at the beginning of this match. But yeah, the other two were too busy the outside brawling, and after the match had finished, they were still brawling in the crowd. Like they didn't really give a fuck what was going on in the ring, which um, I don't know. It's very questionable, I guess. But oh, what a mess! 
Um, I guess it holds a little bit of entertainment value if you want to see random dudes off the street um, trying to kill each other, I guess. <laughs> oh, well, gosh, i got to watch my choice of words on air as well in case um, the YouTube algorithm picks up on it or whatever, or the bots or whatever they are. And, um, yeah, so the White New Jack pick up, picked up the victory. I gave that one a one out of five. <laughs> the the budget did seem like it was around five dollars as well but i've never seen anything like that either wow for going from a three star match to a wow five star fucking match to a one star within the first three matches so that's the first half out of the way let's get on to the second half then guys so we had big donny versus james brody the last battle of burke now this was filmed the way I can describe this, this was filmed on somebody's phone uh, in a kind of, you know, you know, those open door markets you have, like outdoor markets, even, you know, outside. And uh, you've got like the little sh the shelter, but everything else is open. All the walls are open. It was like that kind of thing. But it, uh, it had a concrete floor, obviously no ring. And we had just like a wire mesh cage four corners around that. And various weapons on the outside for them to use. And there was also like a trailer um, outside that as well. And they used that. Uh, the brawl didn't really take place much inside the cra uh, the cage structure. It was um, just this um, this heavy set dude against this um, this skinny sixty year old dude, as they were just really slowly slugging each other with um, like shots. Stiff shots, I guess, punches, chops, um, and then stopping every few seconds to catch their breath, both of them. It was just very awkward to watch. Yes, they did try and use uh, various weapons on each other, and the uh, the heavy set dude suplexed the skinny dude onto the the old dude onto the uh, trailer. But apart from that, there wasn't a lot going on. It was just like punch, punch, use a weapon. All right, let's have a breather for a few seconds. <laughs> right, carry on again. That kind of shit. It was terrible, very terrible. And um, the finish came when the big guy smashed the old dude through one of the cage panels, which collapsed to the concrete floor. And the old dude just couldn't get back up again, like pretty lifeless, pretty much. And yeah, that was the end of that match. Um, I give that a half a star out of five. I wouldn't have even called that a death match. It was just a complete waste of my time, a complete waste of 20 minutes. This was like the longest match on, on hair as well, and it was uh, possibly the worst of the six matches. But yeah, I don't recommend that one at all. Sorry to both wrestlers for, you know, putting on the show, but it, it was god-awful. Match number five was uh, another CZW match. It was a world title four-way death match. Down with the Sickness from 2016. And uh, yay, I, I recognise one of the wrestlers from this. It was uh, Jonathan Gresham, the octopus. But the other three dudes, I don't know their names. I don't really recognise. So I thought, to be fair, I'm going to cheer for uh, the octopus for this one. Only because I know him and he's pretty cool. And it was strange to see him in this match because it the style of match just doesn't suit him. Um, no offence, he seems more like a a technical kind of wrestler, not like a hardcore deathmatch kind of wrestler. But to be fair, he did put up a good fight and um, there were uh, some interesting weapon choices used. I mean, we had like breeze blocks and staple guns and shit like that. And um, yeah, luckily... The Octopus won and won the CZW World Championship as well. And I was absolutely shocked and I was really pleased for him. Uh, so yeah, me rooting for him in this match kind of made it more exciting for me to sit through. But other than that, it wasn't the best uh, match on here, but it was worth a watch. I give it a three and a half out of five stars. So I was entertained. And then we get to the last match, which I was really looking forward to. Um, I've never seen it before. It's 
I guess it's from an episode of ECW Hardcore TV or whatever it was called uh, back then. So Steve Carino versus the Sandman, ECW World Title Texas Death Match. At least I don't think it was from a pay per view because the the quality was like a hand cam filmed kind of quality right by the uh, ring. So it wasn't like from the crowd or anything. It was literally right by the ring, and some of the angle shots were pretty terrible. To be fair. Um, both wrestlers, I have a lot of respect for them, and maybe if the quality of the camera was better, and you know, we we could switch from hard cam to you know different angles of the other proper cameras instead of this handheld shit, I probably could have um, appreciated it a bit more. And I'm sure it was a really good match to some, but to me, it didn't feel that great compared to what I'd already already witnessed with that. Uh, Ricky Shane Page versus Mance Warner match earlier on. I give this one a two and a half out of five stars. If I can get a better quality um, footage, um, uh, sorry, better quality footage of that particular match, I may have different opinion about it. But um, yeah, that's all I've got to say. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> but yeah, guys, best of death matches. What a way to kick off season two of Obscure Wrestling DVDs if I do continue this uh, series. I'm still unsure whether I want to or not. If I do decide to, here's some of the uh, ideas of DVDs I'd like to have a look at for the series. Maybe different ones. I don't know. If you have any suggestions for any for me to check out, let me know in the comments below. But I give this one a score of six and a half out of ten. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let out a deep breath, especially after watching that um, CZW Cage of Death match uh, 10, I do believe that is. But yeah, wow, <laughs> that really is something else. Yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Um, go check out that particular match. And if you want this for your collection, I guess go for it. But uh, prepare for at least two really bad matches on there. I mean, that $5 death match. And the last battle of Burke. Oh, damn, that was terrible. Yeah, guys. Thank you for joining me. Give me a thumbs up if I deserve one today. Subscribe, comment, and all that. And I'll catch you again soon for another video. You stay safe. Goodbye for now.